Exam review question related to keto to enol tautomerization. Write the full mechanisms for the following reactions. Include all charges, lone pairs, and movements of electrons with appropriate curved arrows. So this exam problem involves two ketones, both of which are acetone, and it asks us to write the full mechanism in the presence of acid or base. The mechanism implied here is keto to enol tautomerization, though in 308, acetal formation can be implicated as well with these reagents. Now, just like with all mechanisms, we start out by drawing the reactant and including all of its lone pairs. So I'll draw out acetone, like so, and put in two lone pairs on the oxygen. Because the reaction is occurring in aqueous acid, at any given point, I have a lot of H3O plus in solution. So I can use that as the acid here. Now we know Bronsted acids deprotonate or donate their protons, and protons have a positive charge. But what's more subtle is that in carbonyl systems, the oxygen is partially negative. This means that when this acid deprotonates in solution, which it will, the carbonyl oxygen will acquire the proton. So in order to deprotonate, the bond between the hydrogen and the oxygen returns back to the oxygen in terms of the electrons and the oxygen acquires the proton in a typical nucleophile to electrophile interaction. And I form water as a result. You'll notice that not only do I balance the equation, I still have a positive charge on the left and on the right. Now this protonated carbonyl has a resonance form. Because this positive charge imparts instability on the molecule, it can delocalize between the carbonyl carbon and the carbonyl oxygen. Remember, delocalization of charge in molecules imparts stability. So the resonance structure here involves the spreading of this positive charge across not only the oxygen, but the carbonyl carbon as well. It's not necessarily an oscillation. Instead, it's a spreading or delocalization of that charge, effectively spreading it across a larger area. So in order to delocalize that charge, the carbonyl must break and the oxygen acquires a pair of electrons. That results in an uncharged OH, but a positive charge on the former carbonyl carbon, which was right here. Of course, I can return back to the protonated carbonyl by reestablishing it. This lone pair can reestablish the carbonyl, effectively returning it back to this form. Now before we move on to step two, we need to realize something. Even though I protonated the carbonyl, the Bronsted acid has generated its conjugate base. Water molecules are very mild bases, but in this case, it's effective enough to carry out the second part of the reaction. And because it's an acidic solution, I like to think that any floating water molecules will become protonated again. Step two of the reaction is deprotonation. If I use this resonance structure here, where I add the positive charge on the carbon, in theory, I can deprotonate one of the terminal hydrogens and move the electrons between this carbon and this hydrogen into the carbonyl carbon and carbon bond. Basically, if I deprotonate with this hydrogen, I can establish a pi bond right here. That would form the enol. So that's exactly what the water molecule does in a typical nucleophile to electrophile interaction, again, the water molecule plucks off the terminal proton. The electrons between the hydrogen and carbon move into the former carbonyl carbon to terminal carbon bond, forming a pi bond. And again, I balance my charges on both the left and right side. You'll notice that H3O plus is regenerated, and that's because this reaction is acid catalyzed. Catalysts aren't consumed in reactions, and that's why they're regenerated later on. This is a perfect example of that. Now it is fair game to be asked to go from enol to keto because this reaction is reversible. But what I love about this reaction is that it makes perfect sense. If we start with the enol here and place acid here, H3O+, the pi bond can be protonated because it acts as a nucleophile. The proton, of course, is the electrophile. So if we protonate this pi system and add it right here, we have a positive charge on this carbon, on carbon 2. Just like in step 1, this molecule has two resonance forms, 
which is the protonated carbonyl. And because we regenerated the conjugate base of the acid, the base can come in, pluck off this proton here, forming the carbonyl and regenerating the acid. So in both directions, it makes logical sense. Here we're given the same carbonyl acetone and we're asked to do a base catalyzed keto to enol tautomerization. So again, we start out by drawing the carbonyl and including all lone pairs. And I'll use hydroxide as my base. Now the first step here is a little subtle because hydroxides are proton acceptors, they're Bronsted bases, and they're also Lewis bases because they are electron pair donors. But it's not necessarily clear which proton or which species will accept the electrons from hydroxide. It turns out these terminal hydrogens are mildly acidic. So hydroxide can depronate one of these terminal hydrogens. So electrons flow from the hydroxide oxygen to the proton. The bond between the proton and carbon flows into here. And in typical arrow pushing fashion, if we establish a pi bond here, of course, these electrons must go back to the oxygen. So we generate this molecule and a water molecule as a result of the protonation. You notice that hydroxide, which was a base, has now formed its conjugate acid, water, and we form this molecule, which is known as an enolate. Enolates also have resonance structures, just like we had here with the protonated carbonyl. The negative charge on the oxygen can also be spread across this entire area. This lone pair here, for example, can re-establish a carbonyl. And because of arrow pushing, the electrons in the pi bond can migrate to the terminal carbon, forming a carbanion. Of course, the terminal lone pair here can re-establish the pi bond, and electrons in the carbonyl can go back to the oxygen here. Now, we have the conjugate acid of hydroxide, and it will act as an acid here and protonate this oxygen, just like we had here, the same structure. So I draw in my enolate, and I draw in my acid. Water will deprotonate, and the nucleophile, which is the negative oxygen here, will attack the proton. As a result, we form the enol here, and we regenerate hydroxide. So these are the mechanisms for keto to enol tautomerization, both in acid and in base, starting with acetone and ending up with acetone enol.